Welcome to my channel. Today I have two stencil techniques that are going to create a background that I absolutely love. You are going to want to try these techniques. So I'm working on my 7x10 Cans and Mixed Media Art Journal. I've taken it off the coil and I'm working flat. It has been gessoed and now I'm putting a base coat of color. I'm mixing, in my case, light blue permanent, turquoise, and white gesso. And I'm just getting a layer of paint down here. On my case, I want this to look like the sky, so that's why I've chosen the color, but you can use any color. Don't think that you have to stick to the colors that I'm using to get a similar effect on whatever page you're wanting. And I hope even if you're not a sloth fan, like I'm not either, you can put any focal image on this. So I'm just spreading that out. I like the splotchiness. I like having the areas, the different tones of the blue. That's just going to add interest to your background. So this stencil is called Hanging Vines, and it's one of the newer ones from TCW, and there's a link in the description box. And this is the 12 inch stencil. It also comes in six inches. And I'm layering, laying it on here, and I'm going to stencil with a variety of colors using one stencil, and I'm going to build interest and the layering effect by using different colors. Now I'm using Prussian blue here. And the only thing I would do differently, I would tape it down. Now I'm not pressing really hard with the makeup sponge. I'm not trying to get this to be perfectly opaque or perfect coverage. Because I know I'm going to do multiple colors and build up the vines in the background. Now you can do this with any stencil. So I'm pressing it, some places I'm getting it darker, some I'm getting lighter. That again is just going to add interest. So before I move on, I'm grabbing my Elegant Script stamp from Darkroom Door and I'm putting archival ink on it and I'm going to stamp through the stencil. Now this works because the stamp is very small scale and the openings of the stencil are bigger. So you need both of those things to get an effective stamping through the stencil technique. And yes, I'm getting archival ink on my stencil. I don't care. My tools are to be used. So I'm stamping through here. Now I would have taped down the stencil because it's moving a little bit and that would have prevented it and made it easier for me to do that. So we get the script stamp on top of the stenciling and I love that look. You'll be seeing me doing more of that I'll be going through other stencils that have wide openings that I can do that on. So now I'm going to move to my second color. So stamping through the stencil is one stencil technique. I hope you give a try to. And using layering with one stencil in different colors is the other technique. Both are super easy and use a minimum of supplies. So here I'm coming in with green and I believe I'm using Hooker's green and again I'm not trying to get it perfectly opaque. Now the colors that I use are I chose because I want this to look like a jungle vines in the jungle because I'm using the sloth napkin as a focal image. You can do this with any colors and I plan to experiment. So there we have it. I actually flipped this stencil over to get it going in a different direction. And now 
I'm just going to add a few that I have empty spots with. So you don't have to do the whole of the stencil. I can pick. You could also mix and match. I have this in a six inch stencil and I could have done some of both. So I am so happy with this right now. I just loving it. Now, initially I was thinking I wanted to go three colors and I almost stopped right here because I didn't want to wreck it. And I know we all have that feeling. And then I said, you know what, Karen, it's just paper and paint. If it totally wrecks it, you could start over. Coat of gesso, new page. And here I'm using green, yellow green. And I wasn't sure, so I did one little area and I really liked it, really brightened it and added it. And I'm thinking, oh, if I was doing this again with other colors, maybe I would do an, a neon color in there or use stencil butters with that pearlescent. So something has either, or a metallic. So this really couldn't be easier and it's so effective. So if you're a beginner, go do it. If you're not a beginner, you may want to revisit this tech, these techniques. I used to do this layering technique a lot when I started because it was so effective, but I haven't. And there you see the brightness of that yellow green. And I love it. You'll see a close up of this background by itself at the end of this video. So, this is the Lazy Life napkin. And I've cut out the sloth part. And I've glued it down with my fluid matte medium onto copy paper. Because all I want is the sloth and what he's holding in his hand. I want to cut out everything else. I just want the focal image. Now, I love this background so much, I thought, oh, I can't waste this background on this sloth. But you know what? I have a cute saying to go with it and I know how to do that background and I can do that same background again and use a diff different focal image. So you don't have this napkin or you're not a fan of sloths or you want to go a different direction, totally can. And I'm gluing this down with gel medium. It's a little thicker and I find because this is copy paper and napkin, it's just going to do better. It's going to stick down better. I just have better luck with the gel medium. So now I'm drawing in some of the vines and I grab my ink tense blocks. I had them out for another project and I'm activating it to paint. The ink tense blocks are ink in a solid thing that in a solid condition that you can reactivate. And here I'm just adding more colors, different colors of brown and just adding my own vine for my sloth. So I'm taking what was in the napkin and adding to it as I need for my composition. You could do the same thing. If you don't have intense blocks, you can do the same thing with acrylic paint. And then I'm adding another vine because I want it to spread out across the top of the page a little bit. Now in an upcoming video later this month, you will see this sloth come back. I do a mixed media card using it, but I use totally different techniques, but they're all also a super easy, minimal activity or minimal supplies. I didn't like that, so I wiped it off and I'm just trying again a little bit differently. 
And then I'm adding some of the vines, some of that brown on the vines that I had stenciled with those colors, just to bring that brown into the rest of the foliage to make it look more like it was vines. You just see, I'm just using, I've made a puddle of the Inktense color on my glass surface. So I've colorized the sloth a little bit. I lost some footage. And now I'm coming in with some acrylic paint, some black and some darker browns, just to add more shades to my composition. So I'm adding a little bit of that darkness into the vines throughout the stenciling that I did. I want to see how everything sets up. So this is usually the point where I shade or edge my page. And I'm using black here. I think this sloth napkin and even this vi these vines would look so good on a notebook cover with the, you know, phrase, my procrastination plans. Or I've got so much procrastinating done today. He is quite cute and adorable. But you could have the vines and put a butterfly on that. You could put flowers. Here I'm shading around the sloth. And I'm going on top of the napkin part and on the paper part. I'm using my angle brush and acrylic paint. And this is making the sloth stand out from the background. And I'm shading around the vines for the same reason. This page was a very quick page to complete. So if you're looking for a quick project, this is it. One stencil. one napkin, one stamp. I may found the sentiment, I'm not lazy, I'm energy efficient. And I typed it out on a bold font because I wanted it to stand out. And I put it one on one, part of it on one side and part of the other so your eye goes across the page. I also didn't want to cover up all that beautiful stenciling in the background. I grab my black Posca pen and I'm outlining the sentiment. It just makes it stand out a little bit. And I've grown to like this, but you could shade around it or use a charcoal pencil or Sabilo All pencil if you want. And then I decide to put a sketchy line, a, a slash border around the page. Taking off the tape, I keep that. This helps me get a straight edge. And if I decide I want to frame that what I have in my art journal, I can take that page and frame it, which is also why I don't do the other side. I only do one side of my page. And there we have it, the finished page. I absolutely love that background. Those techniques I promise you I will be doing more of. Here is that background. Yum. Wouldn't that look nice on a card? Hmm. 
Thanks so much for joining me. Ask me a question, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, go get creative.